really nice afternoon here in springtime. And here it is, the Mastil de Parque Centenario. We're exploring this beautiful, beautiful urban park. There's the museum right there. A giant rock from space, right there. Look at the size of this thing. Welcome back everyone to Buenos Aires, Argentina. Buenos Aires, Argentina. We're back. And today, we're exploring this beautiful, beautiful urban park, Parque Centenario. The park has a cool history. There's a lot of stuff to see in the park, so come along. Thanks for clicking on the video. If you want to help out the channel and help it grow, I really would appreciate it. Click on the like button down there, the subscribe button, and the little bell next to it to be notified for when new videos drop. It really helps the channel grow because it's gonna help the YouTube algorithm recognize this content and spread it to other YouTube viewers. If you'd like to support the channel monetarily, I would appreciate that as well. You can leave a super thanks by clicking this thanks button here and give a small donation to the channel. I appreciate your support. So back to the video, enjoy. So the cool thing about the park is it is situated in the middle of a absolutely gigantic traffic circle. Uh, right across the street here, this is actually a large traffic circle. It's hard to see. This street here that runs along the edge of the park is a giant traffic circle. It's kind of hard to see the curve because the circle is so large. But basically, it runs a huge circle around and the park is situated in the middle of the circle. It's very, very cool. On the outside of the circle, there are a lot of um, like science buildings and medical buildings. This right across the street here is the Naval Hospital. There's another hospital right down this way. It's a hospital of oncology. I think it's named after uh, Marie Curie. And then also in this park, there are some cool science buildings. Um, up that way, there is, actually, you know what, let's walk this way. Up this way, there is a, uh, uh, an observatory. The uh, Friends of Astronomy, I think. So here at Parque Centenario, and right here, is the Asociación Argentina Amigos de la Astronomía. Friends of Astronomy. And uh, it's an observatory. They do a lot of cool sciencey stuff in there, obviously. I mean, they have a giant dish. They have an observatory. There's a solar panel, so obviously they're doing cool science stuff in there. And like I mentioned, the park, um, on a beautiful day like this, it's a great day to come and walk your adorable dog. And as we head inside, the cool thing about the park is there are these sort of, um, the way it's designed, there are these paths that act sort of like spokes on the wheel. And in between the different paths, there's green areas like this, and then there's lots where there are buildings, like the uh, Friends of the Astronomy, the uh, observatory. And if you walk into the center, the very center, there is a man-made lake. That's a beautiful centerpiece to the park. Now this park was designed all the way back in the early 1900s. Actually, originally, now the name of the park was West Side Park because this was actually like the western limit of Buenos Aires, the city. At this point now, the city's expanded far past here. This is definitely no longer the west side limit of the city. Land was bought in 1908. The park was designed by a French uh, Argentine, French Argentine urban planner named uh, Charles Thays, I think his name was. And it just so happened that he was able to finish the construction of the park by May of 1910, uh, and they were able to open it on the anniversary of the uh, the hundredth anniversary of the May Revolution, right? So that's why it's called Parque Centenario, because Centennial Park was opened a hundred years after the uh, May Revolution, which is basically you know like the Independence Day for Argentina. 
and it's been Parque Centenario ever since. Here's the lake in the middle with swans and ducks swimming around, people enjoying a really, really, really nice afternoon here in springtime in Buenos Aires. Beautiful, barely a cloud in the sky. Um, beautiful, beautiful weather out. And this lake in the middle was actually added um, originally, well, the park has undergone many, many changes over the years. Um, this was not originally here. This was added, I think, during the like 1980s, 70s or 80s, much later, after the park had already been created. There was, for a time, uh, a giant 20,000 seat amphitheater that was um, built here by Juan Perón. Well, not by him, but during his administration. Um, and it, unfortunately, uh, was destroyed in a fire. But they've rebuilt another amphitheater here, much smaller, only 2,000 seats, but it's named after Juan Perón's wife, Eva Perón. Here it is right here. You can sort of see the seats up there. I'm not sure if we can get in there. Uh, well, it looks like these gates are open. Let's go, let's go take a look. Let's see if we can get in here. Ultimately, what I want to see here, this uh, in the park here, is the Museum of Natural Sciences, or Natural History. Either way, it's a big science museum, and I think it's gonna be really, really cool. I've wanted to see this um, pr basically every time that I've come here to Buenos Aires and just sort of haven't had a chance, and today is gonna be the day. Oh yeah, look at this. This is cool. So now originally, like I mentioned, the original amphitheater that was here, 20,000 seats, gigantic. It, it was basically right in the center where the lake is, as far as I know. This one, smaller, but still very cool. You can see the stage right there, and the seats, the whole thing's dug out, out of the side of a hill. You can see like a hill, right? Very cool. This would be a very, very cool place to see like a performance. Well, it looks, looks like we can't get in. It's all closed off. But we can take one last look at this cool amphitheater uh, before we head back towards the center of the park. Here at the southern edge of the park, there is the Mastil de Parque Centenario. This is like probably the most well-known landmark, I would say, around in the park. This is, I guess, what you would consider the main entrance. Although there are entrances all around the park that you can get in. As you can see, there's this fence around the park, which I think was added quite recently, maybe like 10 or 15 years ago. But apparently it was a very uh, controversial thing and a lot of people didn't want it added. They wanted the park to just be open. Uh, but still, you can get in and out through the gates. And here it is, the Mastil de Parque Centenario. Big flagpole, which normally I guess would be flying an Argentine flag, but not today. But you can see the crest of the Argentine Republic. Very famous. And someone on this side, this is Jose de San Martin, who we recognize from the many videos that we've made about Jose de San Martin. Around on this side, who do we have? Ah, uh, Manuel Belgrano. Manuel Belgrano, who we recognize from videos that we've made about Manuel Belgrano. And here, the, uh, what is this? Salve bandera de la patria, hija de la libertad y madre suya, Rosario Rodan. Well, a gorgeous picture of the raising of the Argentine flag, I would imagine, at the end of some battle. Very cool. Back out here on the street, and we're coming around. There's the museum right there. Coming around to the front of it. There's a parking lot in the back, but I think it was for like staff. Uh, I tried to go in there and it didn't actually look like we could enter there, but I think this is the main entrance here. I see people going in, and it's a really cool building before we go in, of course, because we're here in Buenos Aires. All the buildings are pretty cool, let's be honest. And yeah, it looks like we found the main entrance here. Now we are gonna have to pay to get in. I've done my research ahead of time. 
It is for foreigners 12,000 pesos to get in, which is about like 10 bucks. Let's go check it out. All right, we're in right here in the main entryway. Very first thing you see is this awesome meteorite. Now this I knew was here and I was pretty excited to see it. Crazy. A giant rock from space right there. Here we are in El Agua. The exhibit about water. Somos Agua. We are water. That is true. 70% water we are. Cool. Very cool. Oh, the water cycle. Here we go. Water evaporates. Condenses. Falls down in rain. Gets filtered through the hills and ends up in underground underground waterways that feed into lakes and rivers and down into the estuary and back up. Very cool. Argentina. Plataforma Continental Argentina. The Argentine Continental Shelf. I don't know what they're doing over there. They're doing some sort of renovation because I can hear like saws and tools, power tools going off. Hopefully y'all can hear me. Um, so here's Argentina. There's the Malvinas and the Georgias. Georgia, East Latin, Georgias del Sur. Southern Georgian Islands, Sandwich Islands, and Antarctica. If you're not up on geography, um, Argentina is extremely close to Antarctica. If you go all the way down to like Tierra del Fuego, down here, that smallest, smallest uh, little province down here, Tierra del Fuego, all the way south in Argentina, you're actually extremely close to, uh, to Antarctica. And this part of Antarctica, this little pie piece right here, I think is actually territory of, of Argentina. Because the different uh, countries that, have, that are quite close to Antarctica have territorial claims over like parts of them, depending on where they are. Here we have some fish. Now a lot of these fish we've probably seen already, right? Because we went to that... Uh, aquarium in Rosario, the uh, Rio Paraná Aquarium. Link to that video, of course, in the description with all the rest of the videos, but man, we saw some cool fish in that aquarium. These, of course, are not alive, but we saw some cool living fish. There's dinosaurs. <laughs> Guys, dinosaurs. Ichthyosaurus, Mosasaurus. Wow, look at this. So this is like a ancestor to the uh, like Komodo dragon. Those things are terrifying, Komodo dragons. Forget it. Do you see one of those things? Get out of there. <laughs> Don't mess with that thing. Wow, look at this. All right, so yeah, this is definitely where they're doing construction work in there. It's very loud. Very, very loud. Look at all these really cool dinosaur skeletons. Every time I go and I visit a place like this where they have like dinosaur skeletons, I always wonder how much of the skeleton itself is actually like actual bones and how much is just sort of recreated to fill in. Most of the skeletons you see in museums are either completely, um, like completely fake, um, or they're just partial. It's very rare that you have a very like complete 
very complete skeleton and the, the places where you see like really complete skeletons or like um, almost entirely complete skeletons of of dinosaurs that's like a huge huge uh, archaeological or I mean paleon paleontological achievement but it is still cool to see these right and to picture like what these dinosaurs used to look like you know, with all their muscles and skin and whatnot on them. We'll duck under this guy's tail here. Man. Whew. Modern day birds. Birds are dinosaurs, basically. You ever look at like an ostrich or an emu or something like that? It's basically this. Their skeletons look ex like almost exactly, yeah, here, like here's a Amios Crassus, right? I mean, this is basically an emu skeleton. Terrifying. They're dinosaurs. Birds are dinosaurs. Jeez, look at this skull. Giant T-Rex skull right there. Whew. Crazy. Oh, okay, here. Veni a excavar para encontrar dinosaurios. Basically, it's come excavate to find dinosaurs. So you can come up here, go in the little pit, like dig around for dinosaur bones. That's cool. We're not going to do that. That's obviously for kids, and there's no way I'm getting in there to do that. But it's cool that they have stuff like that. Museums are fun, and of course, when I go to a museum, I just like looking at stuff, but for kids, having interactive stuff like this is very cool. Gotta have stuff for the kids, because let's be honest, like most museums, especially these kinds of museums, like about dinosaurs and stuff like that, it's for kids, right? I think it's interesting. I'm glad we're here, but it's really for the kids. Here we go. Some other fossils. Now these fossils, of course, are like plants that have made impressions in the rock and then those have become fossilized. Very cool. What else do they have over here? This, look at the size of this thing. This is a femur of a sauropod. So like one of these big guys. Jeez, look at that thing. This is an actual real fossil. This is like these things may all be like recreated but this thing that's a real that's a real one yeah so they have a map with all the different types of dinosaurs and where they were located and this one sauropod a sauropod is like one of these big saltasaurus up there saltasaurus Named after, of course, Salta, where we just were. And we actually saw a cool, uh, there was a, a park in Salta, Parque San Martin, that had a uh, natural science museum in there as well. Link to that video in the description. Check that out. Yo, look at these dinosaur footprints, fossilized sauropod footprints. Jeez, look at this thing. Look at the size of it. It's huge. Uh, what do we have? Oh, birds. Seabirds. Petral gigante. That's a big old bird. Starfish. Oh, penguins. There are actually a bunch of different species, I think, of penguins that live uh, in Argentina. And there's different places you can go out on the coast where you can see penguins. Actual penguins, not like stuffed penguins like this, of course. 
penguins, sea lions, all kinds of stuff. It's actually, it's down by like, um, well, I, I'm sure like down south in, actually, I'm not sure. I know, I know in Puerto Madryn, near Puerto Madryn, which is like south of Buenos Aires along the uh, Atlantic coast. I know you can see penguins there. I know there's migratory whales that show up and you can see sea lions out along there, like near that city. I'm not sure what else. I imagine if you go further south, down to like Tierra del Fuego, all the way south near Antarctica, that you would see some of these guys too. Emperor Penguin. And, ooh, giant whale. Whale skull. Look at this thing. Good lord. Buenos Aires, un million de años atrás. Buenos Aires, a million years ago. And here it is. Here's Buenos Aires, a million years ago in this photo. In this clearly actual photo taken by actual people who lived a million years ago. I'm just joking. Don't at me, please. If you're like a conspiracy theory nut, please don't at me. What's this guy? Mammifero herbivorio de gran talla. A herbivorous mammal comparable to a hippopotamus. This guy, oh, Arcototherium. Look at this. Old gigantic bear species. Of course, now extinct. That's wild. That's wild. Extinction of the megafauna. Yeah, I know, over here in the Americas. North America and South America, there were huge, huge megafauna, right? Giant animals, mammoths, and old, like the giant bear that we saw over there, and those other giant herb herbivores. But approximately 10,000 years ago, they went extinct. And now, what's the? I mean, what's the largest mammal that we have here in the Americas? It's probably like a horse or a cow, right? Even those were brought over. Horses. Horses were brought from Europe. So technically invasive species. Camelids, like llama, pretty big. Deer, moose. Probably a moose, actually, now that I think about it. A moose is probably the largest. Moose and, and bears are the largest land mammals that are native to uh, the Americas. I mean, a, like a bull moose is gigantic. Look at this giant land sloth that used to live here. Gigantes de Pleistoceno de Argentina. Giants of the Pleistocene, Pleistocene era. Crazy, crazy giant land sloths, man. Must have been a real trip. Yeah, here he is right here. The mega, Megaterio. This is the Megaterio, the giant like land sloths that used to live uh, here in the Americas. Look at the size of this thing. Creepy craw oh, creepy crawlies. If you've watched uh, some other videos on this channel, you may know I do not like spiders. Whew. I'm okay with butterflies though, and there seems to be a lot of them here, butterflies and moths. We're okay with that. 
totally okay with that. Definitely not okay with that. Some of these are incredible though, these butterflies. Look at these. Wild. Oh, look at this one. These are great. This is a great collection they have here. Little crawly crustaceans. Look at these guys. Oh, they have this. You know what this is? This is a coconut crab, I think. Terrifying, those things. Let's keep moving. Let's get out of the spider section and into the uh, bird section. Wow, look at this. Look at this. Crazy. Look at the size of this guy. I think this is an albatross, yeah. Look at this. Albatross, they're crazy. You know, when I was a kid, I remember hearing a ton about albatross, right? How it has like the largest wingspan of all the uh, birds. And never had actually seen one. And then uh, I went to like an aquarium and they had an albatross and it basically looks like a giant seagull. They are pretty incredible though, oh look at these. Parrots, toucans, there's a macaw right there. Very cool. Beautiful colorings. Halcon peregrino, the peregrine falcon, the fastest animal on the planet right there. Can reach 300 kilometers an hour in a dive. Incredible, those things. This collection that they have of taxidermy birds is really, really, like, it's huge. I mean, look at this. Oh, a South American painted snipe. Owls. Owls are crazy. If, have you ever seen an owl without its feathers? They look like aliens. I mean, I'll put a picture in right here. Look at that. Looks like an alien. Tiny little hummingbirds. Toucans. All kinds of little finches and sparrows, I guess. Songbirds. Various. This is really cool. Th this collection is, is pretty wild. See, this is Savannah Chaqueña. Oh, okay, so this is from like Chaco, which is a province. To, uh, I think this is from like a province up in the northern part of Argentina. Am I right about that? Cool. Laguna Pampeana. So from like the Pampas province lakes and marshes. Costa Patagonica. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay, so this is along, out in Patagonia, right down south of here. Gulls and penguins, like I mentioned, penguins. Selva Misionera. This is like Misiones province. In Misiones, this is over by Brazil, in like the rainforest area in the northern, northeastern part of Argentina. Wow. This is wild. Ambiente Urbano. And here we are, right here. This is basically Buenos Aires. There's the 63 bus. Right there. And uh, these are the kind of birds that you see all around here, out in the city. <laughs> those, those guys we see everywhere. The pigeons. I would say pigeons are probably one of the most successful 
successful animals in like all of recorded history probably right I mean they're everywhere they live in basically every city in the world and now we are in the reptile room okay cool I like reptiles I think reptiles are very cool some people think they're creepy they're a little creepy but I think they're quite cool Snakes and crocodiles, alligators, lizards. We've got some amphibians mixed in here too. Little, little frog guy right there. Amphibians, frogs, salamanders, stuff like that. They're also very cool, I think. Personally. That's just me. I understand why people find them creepy, but I think they're cool. Whew, look at the size of this guy. You can see his big crazy skeleton here too. <laughs> Basically just spine and ribs. Lots of spine and lots of ribs. That's a snake. Cool. Little alligator guy. Little crocodile guy. I guess this is the Crocodilos, yeah. The different crocodilos, right? Familia alliga alligatoridae, alligator family, crocodile family, and gavialidae. Ah, here we go. Turtles, turtles and tortoises. I think I think turtles and tortoises are like super, super cool. That's so cute, look at him. Look at that guy. Giant sea turtles. Cool. Oh, this is the amphibian section. Frogs and toads and things. Look at this guy. Sapo Kuru Kururu. He's gigantic. Huge. Up in the northern, northeastern part of Argentina. Crazy. What do we have here? Modern. Oh, there's us. Australopithecus, the uh, common ancestor, right? Australopithecus, common ancestor between apes, chimpanzees, and us humans. Here's a giraffe. Giraffe, basically a very tall horse. That's not true. <laughs> That's not true, but it is kind of true. Different herbivores, zebra, zebra, basically an angry striped horse, a lion, basically a giant house cat. You like my scientific descriptions of all of these things? Uh, wolf, bear, gorilla. Three things I would not want to tangle with. We'll just leave, leave them be. We have a sea lion here. Oh, there's our carpinchos. Right, capybara, the largest uh, rodent on the planet. Carpinchos. We went uh, trying to look for them in the eco parque here in Buenos Aires. Weren't able to find any, unfortunately. We did find some other cool animals in there. Check that video out, link in the description. And a hippopotamus. These things are terrifying. Hippopotamus, just, they choose violence. Every day, every day the hippopotamus wakes up and chooses violence. Very scary. It's an elephant. Very cool. And uh, what do we got here? Ooh, anteater. That's cool. Anteaters are cool. 
they have these giant claws that they use to like dig right into like termite mounds and stuff like that um, but apparently this is one of the animals that like even a jaguar is like a little reticent to mess with because they can just like take one swipe with that claw catch a jaguar sleeping we have some huh, basically all the things that we just saw except with skin and fur hyenas leopards giant boar caught between a hyena and a leopard Oof. sorry buddy a rough way, rough way to go. Yeah, here we go. Leopards. Leopards are terrifying. Oh, giant angry cat. Just gonna live up in a tree and wait until some unsuspecting son of a bitch is just below them and drop right down on top of them. No thank you. Giant spider on the ceiling, no thank you. Oh, huge spider in the middle of the room. You know what, we're gonna skip this room. Oh my God. Forget it, we're going right past this room. Look at this, giant whale. Whale skeleton. Little rodents. These whale skulls are incredible. And uh, let's see. Oh, this we've seen before. This is a Mara. These are, uh, we saw a bunch of these in Ico Parque here in Buenos Aires. We thought they were carpinchos, or we thought they were called carpinchos. We kept calling them carpinchos. But they're not, they're Mara. Carpincho, right here, which is the uh, word in Spanish for capybara. I did not know that at the time. I know that now. Oh, there's the terrifying leopard again. No, foxes. Foxes. Oh, this is a maned wolf. These things are crazy. Maned wolf. This is like one of the weirdest looking animals on the planet. Because you think wolf, of course, and you think of, you know, like this. But it doesn't look like that. These things are super long legs. Like very, very tall. They have this really cool, like triangular shaped face pretty wild. I don't know why their legs are so long. I imagine it has to do with like being able to be like up above the grass because they live in like areas where there's like really tall grass where they can be up above it and see better. And that's why they evolved that way. So this is like down in Patagonia, right? In the southern part of Argentina, the forests of Patagonia. Some various deer species, little tiny what is this thing called? Pudu. A pudu pudu. That guy's pretty cute. Argentina has just an incredible, incredibly diverse set of biomes, you know? Rainforest in the northeast. Like forests like that. Like the woods, deers, and stuff living in it. Desert in the middle high desert over in the by the Andes mountains there's mountains there's, there's just everything Argentina has everything basically I think uh, well let's see here this one seems to be this room seems to be just a loop it goes around there's the terrifying spider room and uh, there's a stairway go back down. I think we may have seen 
everything there is to see here. Here we are back outside. And we can take one last look here at the uh, museum building behind us. Very cool place. I think that's going to be it for the video. We saw Parque Centenario. We saw a very, very cool science museum that I've been really honestly waiting to see for, for quite some time now. And I'm glad that we did today. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. There's going to be more videos coming from here in Buenos Aires. And uh, stay tuned. See you next time.